Good morning. Good morning. We're just going to give folks a moment to clear the waiting room and connect to audio. Okay. As a reminder, when you are entering from the waiting room, please do remain on mute unless or until you are appearing or speaking before the board. We'll give just another moment to clear the waiting room. These folks are still joining. Good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, January 4th, 2023. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce chairwoman of the board, Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. Thank you for joining us today. I am here today with my fellow commissioners, Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. And as a reminder, once again, please do remain on mute unless or until you are appearing or speaking before the board. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on this morning's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chair and commissioners. Following the questions, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. We'll begin with the first item on this morning's agenda, calling item number one, May May Restaurant Inc. doing business as May May, located at 58 Old Colony Ave in South Boston, has applied for a common bachelor license to be exercised on the above. Ground floor, approximately 1,000 square feet of retail cafe space and 4,000 square feet of production and kitchen space. Open to the public is a single room cafe space plus two ADA accessible restrooms, as well as a private seasonal May through October patio with 10 seats, same operating hours as the restaurant, which runs along the side of the building perpendicular to Old Colony Ave. The production space includes kitchen and prep area, product assembly space for a dumpling machine, packaging room, storage, administrative office, staff restroom, plus walk-in cooler and freezer. Manager Annie Campbell, hours of operation 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Um, Annie Campbell is here, as well as Irene Lee. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. If you would just briefly uh, present your proposal to the board. Sure. Um, so May May um, has been a long time business in the city of Boston. We opened as a food truck in 2012 um, and then have been operating in, at the 506 Park Drive location for the last 10 years. Um, during COVID, we shut down and really transitioned our business to focus just on our packaged dumplings and have been selling them at farmers market throughout farmers markets throughout um, the greater Boston area. Um, we came up with this opportunity at the Ironworks development in South Boston um, to grow the dumpling manufacturing side of the business, as well as to reopen a cafe and welcome our guests who we've been desperately missing um, back on site at May May. Um, so we are planning to open the cafe to relaunch um, our dumpling classes in person, um, and then to also grow um, the manufacturing side of the business through state wholesaling later in the year um, at this space in South Boston. Um, as we presented it to through our neighborhood process, our starting opening hours are planned to be 11 to 6. We do plan to adjust those. We'll go through whatever um, updates we need to in order to do that. Um, but we are focused on being a daytime, um, really lunch and afternoon heavy affair um, with the opportunity to be hosting our dumpling classes and small private events um, in addition to those hours. Thank you, Chairman Joyce. Do you have any questions? Um, I don't have any questions. Thank you for that explanation. Commissioner Carr or Commissioner Saxon, any questions? No questions. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of the board. Some background information on the community process. Uh, an abutters meeting was held on November 3rd. A few residents were in attendance and expressed their support. Uh, the applicant also went on to the Andrew, Civ Andrew Square Civic Association, excuse me, and uh, received support for the proposal as well from that neighborhood civic. Um, at this time, our office is unaware of any concerns from anyone in the neighborhood. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Hi, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Mary Kosky with um, Council of Flaherty's office and would also like to go on record in support we have heard from the um, neighborhood and the civic associations and everybody seems like they think it's a good idea. So thank you. Thank you very much. Were there any additional individuals who wish to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number two, Beijing Taste LLC, doing business as Beijing Taste, located at 377 Washington Street in Brighton, has applied for a common vigiler license to be exercised on the above, one room on the first floor with kitchen and seating, storage and basement. Manager Xiaomei Xing, hours of operation 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? I do, I think I see Chow Mei's iPad. Uh, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Um, hi, my name is Xiaomi Lu, and I'll be representing for Beijing Case. Oh, great. Thank you very much, Ms. Ling. Um, if you could please just briefly present the proposal to the board. Of course. First, I would like to apologize because I'm on the way from traveling. So if there's any loud noise, just let me know. Um, our restaurant located on 377 Washington Street in Brighton, Massachusetts. Majorly, we do Chinese food, um, especially in uh, so uh, the capital style flavor, Beijing uh, uh, food, and the, the Greater Beijing region as well. Um, the owner started the business back in 2016, and our first restaurant was located in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Um, we did, um, it was a hard time during the pandemic, but the owner did um, work things through, through, and right now we're trying to um, find a um, way to do like it better, and we're lucky that we found this place, so we would like to continue to serve our food um, to the public. Thank you very much. Um, any questions from the board, uh, beginning with Chairman Joyce? Thank you. I don't have any questions. Not at this time. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of the board. Some background information on the community process. We had the applicant circulate a flyer to abutters within 300 feet. Um, no one contact our office with any concerns. They also met with the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. Um, with that, we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number three, 101 Federal Street LLC, doing business as Rain, located at 54 Old Colony Ave in South Boston has applied for a common vigiler license to be exercised on the above, a coffee smoothie juice bar located on the first floor of check-in and lounge space of fitness studio Bespoke at BOH. Back of house and prep room is adjacent to client service area. Additional storage provided via cabinets in adjacent hallway. Manager Mark Parton, hours of operation 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Um, I am. Great, thank you. If you could just uh, please briefly propose uh, uh, present your proposal to the board. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Mark, and I'm the uh, owner and operator of Bespoke Studios. We are a boutique gym um, specializing in indoor cycling, strength training, and yoga. We recently launched our fourth permanent studio at 54 Old Colony in the Iron Works project um, that National Development is currently developing. And we are interested in launching a juice, coffee, and smoothie bar in the ground level reception common area 
um, which would be, you know, provide a lot of great synergistic value for our current clients and other um, residents in the area. Uh, thank you. Um, I actually don't have any questions. No questions for me either. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of the board. Uh, ONS hosted an abutters meeting for uh, bespoke on November 3rd. One abutter attended the meeting. Uh, the Andrew Square Civic Association is in support of this proposal. We're unaware of any opposition from the community at this time. Uh, with that, we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flynn's office. The counselor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Hi, yes, this is Mary Kosky. I'm with Council of Flaherty's office and the counselor would also like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. And are there any other individuals who wish to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Column item number four, HG Logan Retailers JV doing business as Hudson Duncan, located at one Harborside Drive in East Boston, has applied for a common bachelor license to be exercised on the above coffee shop with service counter, Terminal C, post security gate C25, with manager Carla Gundla, hours of operation 4 a.m. to midnight. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning. My name is Steve Hallahan. I'm the multi unit food and beverage manager for the Hudson Group here at Logan Airport. We have conducted business in the Boston area for 20 to 30 years. This new Duncan is part of our continual expansion at Logan. Dun Duncan and Hudson will be located in Terminal C. We will not be offering seating or have any restrooms. The airport will provide this. Great. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions for the applicant? No questions. Thank you. No questions for me. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. And you. Calling item number five, Yard House USA, Inc., doing business as Yard House, located at 110 Huntington Ave., holder of a common vigil or seven-day alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Jose D. Lopez, Jr. to William Golden III. Uh, who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Bill Chair Golden. members of the board. Uh, Tyler Hensler here from uh, Upton, Connell, and Devlin, counsel for the applicant. Um, we're here for a change of manager, and with me today is proposed manager William Golden. Uh, Bill is a U.S. citizen, he's a master's resident, he's familiar with the rules and regulations related to the service uh, and sale of alcohol in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and he's worked in the hospitality industry since 2004, and he is TIP certified and service certified. So we thank you for your time, and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Attorney Hensley. Hensler. Um, Chairman Joyce, do you have any further questions? All right, is um, Mr. Golden here? Is that, I thought I saw two. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I just wanna make sure, uh, Danny, did he cover all four manager of record questions? Uh, all four were, were covered, yes. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Neither do I, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify in this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. <clears throat> Calling item number six, Parm Copley LLC, located at 100 Huntington Ave, holder of a common vigil or seven day alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Angela Cortez to Patrick Choi, attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning, attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee. Uh, with me this morning is Patrick Choi, the proposed new manager of record. This is a new uh, new restaurant, which has just recently opened up uh, it, at the uh, Huntington Avenue address, Mr. Choi is uh, a mass resident, a US citizen, has experience in the industry, 
and we are certainly happy to take any of your questions this morning. Thank you. Thanks. I'm just scanning. Um, is that Mr. Choi Patrick C? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Choi, are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? I am, yes. Okay, thank you. No questions. Nothing further for me, thank you. Not for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number seven, Marriott Hotel Services, Inc. doing business as Marriott Long Wharf, located at 296 State Street. Holder of an in-holder all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Matthew Moore to Mark Sarasuolo, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Uh, Mark Sarasuolo uh, here. Um, so <clears throat> I am a uh, U.S. citizen, uh, resident of Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I've been in uh, the hospitality industry uh, since the 1990s. I've uh, managed uh, properties in Boston for the last 10, 10 years plus. Um, and uh, very familiar with TIP certified, very familiar with the process for the state as well as the city. Um, Mr. Sarasulo, you might have covered this, but are you a resident of Massachusetts? Yes, yes I'm a resident of Massachusetts. And a, and a citizen? And a citizen, of course. Okay, thank you. And you covered the other questions. Um, I have, um, other than the change of manager, no other operational changes? No, no other changes. Okay, thank you. I have no other questions. <clears throat> further from me, thank you. None from me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number eight, American Multi Cinema Inc. doing business as AMC Theaters Boston Common 19, located at 175 Tremont Street, holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Reza Merchant to Caitlin Richards, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Good morning, everyone. My name is Selena Udon. I'm the manager of alcohol and licensing for American Multi Cinema Inc. Um, online with me today is Caitlin Richards, also known as Katie. She is the proposed manager um, for the location. Okay, thank you. Um, and thank you for joining us, Katie. Um, are you a citizen? Good morning. Yes, I am. Are you a resident of Massachusetts? Yes, I am. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. And what is that experience? Uh, I have worked um, as a waitress a, a few years ago as my first ever job, but specifically in the restaurant industry, I've run the Menlo Park Theater in New Jersey as the front of house senior manager, as well as the back of house. Previously to that as a restaurant manager, very familiar with bar tips and RSOA one and two. I've also prior uh, was working at Framingham, the AMC location, uh, and was the front of house uh, senior there. And okay. currently I'm Boston's general manager. Okay, um, so I'm gonna ask the final question. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. Nothing further for me. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number nine, Pineapple Restaurant Group Boston LLC, doing business as the Trophy Room at Stay Pineapple Boston, located at 22 to 28 Chandler Street. Holder of an in-holder all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Edward Charles Moses Granger to Taylor Lessandrini. Uh, attorney Andrew Upton, Attorney Upton. Uh, sorry, uh, Attorney Tyler Hensler. Uh, Great, thank you. The applicant here again. Good morning. Um, with me today is Taylor Lessandrini. We're here for the change of manager. Um, Taylor is a U.S. citizen and a Massachusetts resident. Uh, she's familiar with the rules and regulations related to the service uh, of alcohol in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. 
um, and she has experience in the industry. She's worked uh, in the hospitality industry since 2008. Um, Pineapple Restaurant Group Boston is very happy to have her and we're happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, attorney. And I just, oh, thank you, um, Taylor, for joining us. I don't have any further questions at this time. Nothing further from me. Thank you. None from me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling items 10 through 14, Trustees of Boston University, located at 775 Commonwealth Avenue, 225 Bay State Road, uh, 595 Commonwealth Avenue, and two licenses doing businesses at the Aganis Arena at 925 Commonwealth Avenue. Holder of uh, two common vigilar seven-day wines and malt beverages licenses and three club all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change of officer, director, LLC manager. And on items 10, 11, and 12, has also petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Joseph Lachance to Jonathan Webster, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Mahler, Associate General Counsel for Trustees of Boston University, the licensee. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, if you could please just uh, briefly outline the proposed changes to the board. Sure. So um, for numbers uh, 10, 11, and 12, with respect to 595 Commonwealth Avenue, 775 Commonwealth Avenue, and 225 Bay State Road, we are here to add Gary W. Nixa as treasurer. And also with me this morning is Jonathan Webster, who is the new proposed manager of record uh, for these licenses. There are no other operational changes proposed. Uh, Jonathan is a U.S. citizen and a Massachusetts resident. He is familiar with the rules and regulations regarding the sale and service of alcohol, and he does have experience in the food and beverage industry. And as I mentioned, he's joining us today if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Mr. Webster, what is your experience in the food and beverage industry? Uh, <clears throat> I've been operating a uh, university food service since 2005. Okay. And just to tease out the last question, you are familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and all the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions on 10, 11, or 12. None for me either. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. And Attorney Mahler, is the officer change uh, the same as on items 13 and 14? Uh, correct. That's uh, adding Gary W. Nix as treasurer with no other operational changes proposed. Great. Thank you very much. Then uh, in that case, are there any individuals who would like to testify on these matters, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on items 10 through 14? Seeing none, the board will take these under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 15, Brasserie 560 LLC, doing business as Brasserie, located at 560 Harrison Ave in Roxbury, holder of a common victual or seven-day alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for the approval of a management agreement between Brasserie 560 LLC and Champagne Supernova LLC, doing business as Marseille. Secondly, has requested to remove the previously listed management agreement from the license premise description. Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Good morning, everyone. Andrew Upton for the operations manager. With us also is Mark Julian, who represents the licensee, who would like to give the initial part of the presentation. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Julian. I'm the controller of GTI Properties. And so in Boston, I'm speaking on behalf of the licensee. We as the landlord control the liquor license and have previously leased to Gaslight, who op operated a sophisticated French restaurant, uh, French brasserie in this location for many years. And most recently, brasserie, who used a similar concept. We've seeked out Louis Lagaric, who is well-known and well-respected operator in the South End, having previously owned Frenchie and Colette, and currently owning Petit Robert over on Columbus Avenue. Uh, the plan is for him to open a new restaurant at 560 Harrison Ave, named Marseille. Uh, there's no change in location, floor plan, hours, or ownership of the license. Uh, we've also spoken with Leslie Fine, the president of the East Berkeley Neighborhood Association, uh, Association, and their board has voted in support of transferring the license so that Marseille can open while also noting how excited they are to have the restaurant in the neighborhood. 
Uh, we've also spoken to many nearby res res residents and small businesses who share the enthusiasm, as well as speaking with Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, uh, who waived any additional meetings and also expressed her excitement for the new restaurant. Uh, and at this time, I'd like to turn over the floor to Louis Legarek and his counsel, uh, and Andrew Upton, who will be happy to answer any and all questions you may have. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, Mark. Uh, as Mark mentioned, Loic has successfully operated um, several alcohol licensees in the city of Boston. He currently runs the T. Robert and Cafe Batifall in Cambridge, uh, both of which are in good standing with their local boards and the ABCC. Uh, and we're glad to answer any questions about the operations, but I think Mark has covered most of what we need. Okay, thank you. Um, so no operational changes, just a new management agreement and removing the previous management agreement. Uh, yes, Loic will obviously bring his own style of food and you know operational flair to the establishment, but uh, same exact uh, restaurant and same French bistro concept. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. I don't have any other questions right now. No questions for me either, thank you. None from me, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? And just to clarify, Attorney Upton, there's no change to the manager of record. This is just uh, where we're doing this through the man management agreement. Uh, that is correct. At some point in the future, once they open and he hires a full-time manager, we, we may come back for that. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, with no uh, testimony uh, provided, we board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling item number 16, HE Pub Inc. doing business as the Genie Johnston, located at 144 South Street in Jamaica Plain. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcohol beverage license has petitioned to pledge the license to Berkshire Bank. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, Marissa McCall for the applicant HE Pub Inc. doing business as the Genie Johnson. The Genie Johnson is a longtime staple in Jamaica Plain. Recently, the owners decided to purchase the property that the pub has been in for years. Um, with the help of a loan from Berkshire Bank, which closed in June, and Berkshire Bank is requiring them to pledge their license as a requirement of the loan. Th thank you, sorry, I was looking for the, my unmute button. Thank you for explaining that. Um, so in essence, the public own the building that they have been occupying. And in order to do so, they're pledging their alcohol license to do so. That is correct. Okay, thanks. I have no other questions. No questions for me. Thank you. None from me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item 17, South Boston Candlepins, Inc., doing business as South Boston Candlepins located at 543 East Broadway in South Boston. Holder of a common vigil or seven day wines and malt beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Brian Tunney to John Tunney. And secondly, has petitioned to amend the closing hour of the license business from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Hi uh, there, I am. Uh, we are in the middle of uh, moving. My dad is retiring, so I'm fully taking over the business, so more of a housekeeping matter, uh, moving the manager. I am a resident of the Commonwealth. Uh, I've been managing it for the past 10 years, so I am familiar with the rules and regulations of the ABCC. Uh, let's see, just make sure I check all the boxes here. Um, and so, and then for the 11 a.m. or 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., we'll be moving uh, operationally, hopefully, just to check all the boxes. Um, Southie is a little bit crazy, but we'd like to capture the business that can come in after 11 p.m. We don't plan on ever staying open till 1 a.m., but just to meet the rules and regulations that this board has in front of us, you know, I would not want 1201 to hit and then everyone has to be rushed out the door. So that's the only reason we are applying for the 1 a.m. license. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Tunney. Can you just go into a little bit more about the additional two hours, how it will help your business? Like what, what is your business plan now? If you have to close at 11, what is the last group that you allow in and how will uh, expanding it to 1 a.m. help your business plan? 
So we, the last group we allow in is usually about 10 o'clock. I run everything into hour to half hour increments, um, you know, $12 for an hour of bowling. And then last call is at 1045. Uh, currently we have a couple of leagues with us during the week. Um, one being Volo Sports that, you know, they bowl from about nine to 11. And with those, that hard closing hour, you know, we're kind of rushing them out the door. So we are kind of cheating them of the experience a little bit. Uh, that's why mainly I'm here to, uh, you know, petition for this idea because, you know, I, we do feel that we do have business past the current operating hour. Um, but we do understand, you know, a 1 a.m. isn't necessarily what the neighborhood's looking for. So we're just trying to be within the rules of the board, if you will, while still trying to operate efficiently in a safe manner. Okay. And um, do you allow people in after 11 who aren't bowling? No, we to, do not. Just to consume alcohol? Okay. Okay. Those are my questions right now. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? I don't have any questions at this time. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who'd like to testify in this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of the board. Some background information on the community process. ONS hosted a butters meeting on December 5th uh, regarding the extended hours. Uh, the proponent answered all the questions raised during the meeting, and one resident expressed opposition to the proposal. Uh, at this time, we'd like to defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. We have heard many concerns from the neighbors about a 1 a.m. closing hour, but the councillor would like to see some compromises from the owner to see if they're open to close at 12 p.m. instead of 1 a.m. And if they do, then the councillor would like to support um, the application for a 12 p.m. closing hour. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Danny, I have one more question. Mr. Tunney, so when would last call be? Or 1 a.m.? Yeah. I would probably make it at 12.30. And then all patrons would have to be out by 1 a.m.? Uh, yes. I mean, currently, it's, like I said, this 1 a.m. is just to cover my basis for a closing hour. If we were to, say, compromise at 12, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking to have people walking out the door at 1.30, if you know what I mean. Um, for us, it's just more to be within the rules and regulations of this board and not have to really worry about it. Um, but staffing is currently an issue to even staying open that late. So that's why I anticipate it being the 12 p.m. close 99% of the time. Okay. So if you had a 12 p.m. close, last call would be at 11.30. Correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions from the board or any further individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Following item 18, J. Wallajai Corp doing business as Get and Go, located at 563 Columbus Ave in Roxbury. Holder of a retail package store wines and malt beverages license has petitioned to change the category of the license business from a retail package store wines and malt beverages license to a retail package store all alcoholic beverages license. Attorney Tom Miller. Attorney Miller. Thank you, Secretary Green. Good morning, Chairman Joyce, Commissioners. Tom Miller from McDermott, Quilty and Miller in Boston on behalf of the licensee. Uh, I am joined today by the ownership and management group, VJ, Andy, and Vinny. Um, you can see them joining us today. Uh, they have owned and operated this license without violation or incident for more than two years. Uh, Get and Go is a neighborhood market that sells groceries and other goods in addition to the wine and malt beverages they already sell. Uh, this application is to expand the offerings to include the sale of all alcoholic beverages. Since purchasing the business, they have listened to the requests of their customers, including changing the point of sale system so that pricing is clearer. They have also chosen on their own to not sell single beers. Um, these changes have resulted in a more transparent operation that eliminates a, sor a source of trash and nuisance in the neighborhood. This request uh, to include this limited sale uh, of hard alcoholic beverages also comes at the request of their customers who would like the option of buying these products while they're picking up other groceries um, at the store. Uh, this proposal will add approximately 15 to 20 square feet of hard alcohol to the approximately 2,200 square foot store, making up less than 10% of the, to squares to the store's total square footage. Um, as seen in the way that Andy, VJ, and Vinny have run this business, uh, they understand the impact a store can have on its community. 
which is why they've chosen not to sell NIPs in addition to already not selling single beers. Um, there is a public need for this change in category. As I've said, this is, this is a response to direct requests from their customers. This need can also be seen in the 11 letters of support uh, received and the more than 150 signatures on the support petition. Um, as part of this application process, we have uh, gone to the Claremont Neighborhood Association who have supported this product, uh, supported this um, change. Um, they have acknowledged the licensee's strong relationship with and responsiveness, re, strong relationship with and responsiveness to the community and their steps they have taken resulting in a positive impact on the neighborhood. This licensee is a good neighbor who has operated without incident since purchasing this location. And the addition of hard alcohol is a requested amenity from those customers who want the one-stop shopping experience. Um, we wanna thank you for hearing this application today and would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Attorney Miller. Just for clarification, how much of your current um, wine and malt offerings will you um, will you be like adding the, the hard alcohol to it or would you be replacing what you currently have? I'm just trying to see what are you are, are you adding or just replacing some of the stuff you already offer? Um, the, the plan is to add this in addition to the existing offerings of wine okay. and malt beverages already, um, already on sale. Uh, it, the reorganization, as I said, it, it's minimal, will take up approximately 15 to 20 square feet of the total square footage of the store. Um, it, it is focused on what customers have been requesting um, uh, be, the applicant provide. Okay, thank you very much for the clarification. Um, I don't have any other questions right now. None for me at this time, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Crucioli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office would like to defer to the board at this time. An abutters meeting was held in December of 2022, where support was shown by the abutters under the condition that they do not sell nips or singles. They also went before the Claremont Neighborhood Association and received their support as well with that same condition. I've also received 11 letters of support and a support petition with over 150 signatures from butters. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Uh, I see a hand raised from a Bob Barney. Mr. Barney, you may unmute yourself and uh, please provide testimony. Hi, uh, my name is Bob Barney. I'm president of the Claremont Neighborhood Association and just here to speak on behalf and support of the applicants. Uh, they've done a fine job with their, their store in the past two years. They're very interested in serving the community. So we're fully engaged with them and fully support this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bernie. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling item number 19 at D Chan Inc. located at 604 to 608 East Broadway in South Boston, holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to the Hub Liquor Group, Inc., doing business as Hub Liquor at the same location. Arian Light and Manager, closing hour 11 p.m. And lastly, is petitioned to pledge the license, stock, and inventory to Middlesex Federal Savings Bank. Attorney James Rudzer. Attorney Rudzer. Yes, uh, good morning, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair, and members of uh, the licensing board. Um, this is uh, the Hub Liquor, um, which is at... Uh, the corner of East Broadway and I Street, and it's been a liquor store for decades in South Boston. Uh, the current owner of the liquor store, D Chan Inc., um, has redeveloped the property. The property, the, the, the store's actually been closed while the existing, the then existing one story uh, commercial space has been redeveloped into a condo building with the commercial space on the first floor and a part of it in the basement and then six units above it. Um, the building is a beautiful uh, addition to East Broadway. And um, following the completion of that construction, the current licensee decided to sell not only the commercial condo, um, but also the licensed premises, the, 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 the all alcoholic off-premises license. The proposed licensee is um, a, a newly created Massachusetts uh, corporation um, wholly owned by Arian Litton, who is sitting next to me. He's the sole stockholder 
uh, officer and director. He is a citizen of the United States. He is also a resident here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. He is familiar with the laws of uh, the ABCC and the rules of this board because he presently holds a license out on uh, Cummings Highway um, in uh, Roslindale. He is, um, he, and he, he is also TIP certified. Um, he will own the condo on which the building or the business is located. He'll just own that in as a nominee trust that he will that we're going to be preparing. Um, to finance the acquisition of both the uh, the commercial condo and the business, uh, we're proposing a pledge of the license to Middlesex Federal Savings Bank, who has issued a loan commitment uh, for financing both acquisitions. I don't have any further presentation. If the board has any questions for me or my client, who is, again, sitting right next to me. Thank you, Attorney Redzer, and thank you for joining us um, mm -hmm. today, Mr. Litton. Um, will you be, just one question, will you be primarily working at this location or splitting your time between the two? I think he anticipates splitting time between his two licensed locations. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have any other questions at this time. I don't have any questions, thank you. None from me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Good morning, Madam Odisha, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 20 had been previously approved by the board. It is only on the agenda uh, to correct a legal defect in the abutter notifications that went out. Calling item 21, Sunnyside Enterprises, Inc. doing business as Tremont Market, located at 748 Tremont Street in Roxbury. Holder of a retail package store wines and malt beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to KL Group, Inc. doing business as Tremont Market at the same location. Krishna A. Katri, manager, closing hour 11 p.m. And lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license to Sunnyside Enterprises, Inc. Uh, attorney Benjamin Levin, Attorney Levin. Uh, good morning, uh, members of the board. Um, again, my name is Alan Levin. I'm here on behalf of KL Group Incorporated, um, which is seeking to uh, transfer the license of the liquor license currently held by Sunnyside Enterprises, Inc. Um, Mr., uh, the KL Group uh, is purchasing the existing business. Um, Mr. Katri, who, who is on the Zoom with me, um, is currently the, the manager of, that, of the liquor store um, at that location for Sunnyside Enterprises. Uh, Mr. Katri is a, is a shareholder and manager of Sunnyside, has been for many years and has been the manager of this property for many years. Um, essentially, he's purchasing the business, this business from uh, Sunnyside, who is essentially getting out of the liquor, uh, liquor store business. Um, as I mentioned, he's Mr. Katri has been the manager at this uh, location for several years and, and will continue to be the manager. Um, Mr. Kotri is TIP certified. He is a United States resident and a resident of Massachusetts. He is familiar with the rules and regulations of the city of Boston, Boston licensing board and the ABC, ABCC as they relate to this, uh, as they relate to the sale of alcohol. Um, I guess that's essentially it. If you have any questions for Mr. Kotri, he is available uh, to answer. Thank you, Attorney Levin, and thank you, Mr. Kotri, for joining us. Um, as you are already an approved manager of record by this board, I don't have any questions at this time. Thank you. Yes. I do not have any questions either. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 22, JP Partners, Inc. doing business as Canary Square, located at 435 to 439 South Huntington Ave in Jamaica Plain. Holder of a common vigil or seven-day alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Alamo Seaport, LLC, doing business as Alamo Drafthouse Cinema, located at 60 Seaport Boulevard, number 315. 
the premise consists of on level three of the property located at 60 Northern Avenue, consisting of 10 movie auditoriums, concession area with seats and bar area, restrooms and storage space, together with level 3.5 mezzanine, consisting of additional storage space, office space, and kitchen, closing hour 2 a.m. Hannah Staten Manager, Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning again, uh, Attorney Green, <clears throat> Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the transfer E. Alamo Seaport LLC. With me this morning, Hannah Staten, who is the proposed manager of record, and Claudia Jaramillo from uh, the Alamo LLC. This um, application is to uh, the rebirth, I guess you would call it, of the theater location at uh, 60 Seaport Boulevard, which was previously uh, Showcase Cinemas, which during the uh, COVID uh, uh, situation closed. Uh, and that space has been vacant. This is a replacement, if you will, of that same location as a theater, which it was licensed as for the probably the preceding two or three years before COVID. Um, we uh, attended a an early meeting of the Fort Point Neighborhood Association, actually back in September. We were fully supported. People were very anxious to see this site reopened and some life brought back to this area. Uh, as a result, um, I know Councillor Flynn's office and ONS were represented and did not require any further outreach from us at that point in time. Uh, so we are certainly here, happy to answer any questions, but this will be a uh, movie theater, hopefully replacing a movie theater at the same location with new ownership and new management. Uh, and we're happy to answer any of your questions. Ms. Staten is here. She is a resident, a citizen, and has experience in the industry. Um, and thank you for having us this morning. Thank you, Attorney Quilty. Um, Ms. Staten, are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay. Just a comment, this is a neighbor a license that in one of the neighborhoods of our city being moved to the seaport. I know there were some questions about this, but it is a private transaction. Um, yes, ma'am. On the record for yes. those that are um, that are watching. So thank you, and thank you for explaining this transfer. I don't have any other questions at this time. No questions for me at this time. Thank you. Not for me. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of the board, uh, as you heard from the applicants representation. Uh, they did outreach with the local civic association. At this time, our office is unaware of any concerns from the neighborhood. Uh, with that, we defer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 23, Golden Naga Inc. doing business as Laughing Monk Cafe located at 737 Huntington Ave. Has applied for a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. Approximately 2,487 square feet on first floor in two rooms, 1,080 square foot main dining area with two rooms, including kitchen, sushi bar, dining room, 1,407 square foot second room with second dining area and bar seating, storage and rear, 800 square foot basement for office and storage. Manager Dom Nakapakorn, closing time 1 a.m., Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kristen Scanlon representing the applicant. Um, Dome uh, Nakapakorn, who is the owner and current manager of record for the establishment, is traveling overseas right now, but he would remain the manager of record on this license if approved. Um, the application before you is for any available new all alcohol beverage license. By way of background, this restaurant first opened near Brigham Circle in Mission Hill in 2017 as a full service Thai and sushi restaurant. It quickly became a very popular food destination, receiving consistent praise from the neighborhood, patrons, and um, a variety of media outlets. Of note, the restaurant did receive the Mission Hill Main Street's Business of the Year Award in 2018 by the city of Boston, then Mayor Marty Walsh. Um, the restaurant has not only been an asset to the city, but in particular to the Thai community as well. Um, it did add cordials to its original beer and wine license a few years ago, and since that time has been and continues to be an exemplary um, business establishment and licensee. 
a large part of the reason for seeking the all alcohol beverage license now is the restaurant's plans to expand into the neighboring adjacent and vacant commercial space at 741 Huntington Ave to include a Vietnamese sandwich shop and overflow for the existing restaurant space. Of course, they'll continue as a casual quick lunch spot and fun and vibrant dinner uh, venue, which is also available for events. No changes will be made to the existing space and they plan to utilize the kitchen on the existing side for the expanded space as well. But the square footage would increase from a little over a thousand square feet now to 2,500 square feet. Seating would go from approximately 34 now to 71. Um, the closing hour would remain the same at 1 a.m., but they would like to open um, at 7 a.m. if they could for the new sandwich side of the restaurant to accommodate um, uh, breakfast options if they could. As, because this is an application for a new license, I know um, a conversation on public need is warranted. I would hope the character and fitness is certainly not in question by the board at this time with this established um, licensee and business. But as previously mentioned, um, they've been a stellar business and licensee at this location, an asset to the Thai community offering unique concepts, uh, food concepts with Thai, Vietnamese and other Asian influences. It's really been a well-run and loved enterprise. Um, it's an asset to the continued improvement of the neighborhood and attractiveness um, economically as well. Great addition for the commercial destination of Brigham Circle as Mission Hill has only been awarded a very small handful of neighborhood restricted licenses since they were created. Um, as far as community outreach is concerned, we did meet um, last year with the Community Alliance of Mission Hill, had a mayor's office, um, a butters meeting, and also met with the Mission Hill Neighborhood Housing Services, all who um, strongly supported the expansion and the upgrade of the license. Echoing some of the comments we heard, which goes to support the public need and public's desire to support improvements at this restaurant, some noted this um, restaurant is a wonderful small business, which adds to the diversity and fabric of the neighborhood. It's a tremendous newer addition to Mission Hill, a great new place to eat um, and support not only for the hospitals, for people to be able to grab a sandwich who work close by, but expands the options for what you would want for meal options in the area. And that supporting small businesses in the neighborhood is a vital thing. Um, Furthermore, this is a great business owner and operation. Please support our small businesses or they'll be replaced with office space that's closed at night, offering zero to the neighborhood. And lastly, that Laughing Monk has really become an attraction to Mission Hill. Happy that people are happy that it's there and is an example of a restaurant who made it through difficult times with COVID um, that is expanding rather than closing down and is really a great example of a restaurant thriving in Mission Hill. Um, at this time, happy to answer any questions or concerns the board might have regarding this proposed application. Thank you, Chairman Trace. Any questions? Um, attorney, did you say that the proposed manager of record um, is already approved by the board? Yes, he's currently the manager of record on the existing beer, wine, and cordials license at the um, establishment and would remain the manager of record if this license is approved. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I missed that at the beginning. Um, I don't have any further questions at this time. Uh, neither do I. Thank you. None for me either. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Maggie Van Scoy. I'm with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, our office would like to defer to the judgment of the board. Our office ran in a butters meeting about a year ago. After that, this applicant met with the Mission Hill Neighborhood Housing Services, which has offered a letter of strong support for this application, as well as the Community Alliance of Mission Hill, which also offered their unanimous support for this application. Um, our office is not aware of any concerns at this time. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Those are all the items before the board today that will uh, adjourn this morning's hearing. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.